know what you're thinking. And yeah, this movie should have been done on November 5th, but uh, if it helps, I'm actually recording on the 5th. See? So, I'm clearly in the right. Hi, I'm Anthonix Maximus, bitching to you about movies because, well, we're still waiting on the results of the election. I've been awake since that night. Today we'll be talking about V for Vendetta, a movie about anarchy versus fascism. Not at all related to what's going on here in the States. Not at all. To give you some background here, V for Vendetta is actually a British graphic novel that was published in 1982. It began as a black and white serial in a short-lived UK anthology called Warrior. V for Vendetta was actually written by Alan Moore, which you should be familiar with because he also gave us The Killing Joke. And he also gave us The Watchmen. Along with Alan Moore, it was illustrated by David Lloyd, and due to its popularity, V for Vendetta was actually picked up by DC as a limited 10-issue miniseries. And years later, it would be re-released as a collective under the sub-company of DC Vertigo. Now, this story is actually supposed to take place in the 1990s. In this reality, the world has been devastated by the 1980s nuclear war, leaving the UK to be the power country. And because of this, the UK has become a police state and very fascist. And V is actually a man who, inspired by Guy Fawkes, tries to take down the fascists as a revenge for him being captive by them for so many years. V, who had been captured by them for so many years, plots to actually take down the fascists, inspired by Guy Fawkes. And you can tell this story was actually inspired by Marvel UK's own Night Raven, along with a little hint of Robin Hood and also The Shadow, pretty much taking on the film noir genre. And now the the film V for Vendetta was actually released in 2006 by the Wachowskis, fresh right off the success of The Matrix, of course. So let's just go ahead and jump right into this film, huh? I know his name was Guy Fawkes, and I know in 1605 he attempted to blow up the Houses of Parliament. But who was he really? Yeah, this film pretty much glorifies Guy Fawkes, whose whole plan was to actually blow up the Parliament. We're told to remember the idea, not the man. Remember the idea, not the man. It's kind of like what we tell people about any time they are listening to any Michael Jackson song. V for Vendetta. Vendetta's for V. USA. And now, 20 years later, is what? The world's biggest leper colony. Why? Godlessness. Oh, well, there you go. Looks like the UK has their own version of Alex Jones. With a little bit of Sean Hannity. So as we see, this is Natalie Portman playing the role of Evie. She's pretty much the audience avatar for the film. Playing the part of V is actually Hugo Weaving, Agent Smith. I made a mistake. I shouldn't be out after curfew. I know that. Yeah, well, maybe you could look after us before getting back to your uncle. I don't think these officers are very nice. See, my friend here, he's kind of sick. Don't you, Willie? Real sick. Bad case of the blues. You can feel them. I sure as hell like a lot of puns, though. She just threatened us. That she did, that she did. You know what that means, don't you? It means that we exercise our own judicial discretion. And now we have V saving the day, dressed up as a combination of Anonymous and a Musketeer. <laughs> Who is but the form following the function of what, and what I am is a man in a mask. Hey, settle down. Not all of us watch Downton Abbey. Voila! In view, a humble vaudevillian veteran, cast vicariously as both victim and villain. Thank you for your many alliterations. And after all that, V takes Evie up to the roof to show her what he has in mind for that evening. <laughs> He may say he's a troublemaking anarchist, but in his defense, as long as he uses classical music, he's a genius. Ours, you would better have results. And of course, now we have the Chancellor, who is played by John Hurt. And you're going to notice that this story has some parallel to a certain book called 
1984 from George Orwell. Yeah, the Chancellor is actually the big bad of the film. Consider him the head of the fascists. Gentlemen, I want this terrorist found, and I want him to understand what terror really means. And here we are at V's work, British Television Network. And along in this film, we also have Stephen Fry playing pretty much the late night talk show character of this movie, who Evie works for. And they're actually confidants. That was the guy that Evie was supposed to meet before she met with V. Jeez, there's so many V's in this movie. What's all that? Not sure they just arrived. Being that it's still November 5th in this movie, V is not quite done with his plan. I think V is going to cause a lot of damage over at this TV station, but not nearly as much damage as the Gremlins and Gremlins 2. Words are for the means to meaning, and for those who will listen, the enunciation of truth. You know, I think I might like this daily show format. And together we shall give them a 5th of November that shall never, ever be forgotten. Yeah, yeah. Can you wrap this up? The bad guy from Bill and Ted's Bogus Journey needs to talk on camera, too. Oh, that's why he sent all those dancers the costumes. He was hoping to do another rally on some college campus. But at this time, it's believed that during this heroic raid, the terrorist was shot and killed. Bollocks. And of course, if you don't quite understand what's going on here, it's basically the government using V's idea against him, which is actually talking on camera to manipulate the public mind so they don't have to think about any terrorist attack, when really they're just actually trying to make sure that no one else gets the same idea. And now, after waking up in V's lair, Evie discovers he has quite a horde collection of many things that were outlawed by the government. And yeah, I gotta say, he's a bit of a hoarder. More so than I am. <laughs> there you go, yeah, I like that. He's still wearing his outfit because clearly he's a burn victim of some sort. And he's got the most frilliest apron on. No, I am grateful. Your hands. Yes. Evie, don't be rude, all right? He has a condition called the Mitch McConnell. There was a fire a long time ago. Ancient history for some. Not really very good table conversation. He doesn't want to think about that gender reveal ever again. V and his accomplice Evie Hammond, neo demagogue, spouting their message, message of hate. hate. Wow, this jerk actually watches his own videos while nude. Okay, I do that too. Holy Christ! Jesus! Ah. You. It is you, the ghost of Christmas past. But yeah, I could have used this movie for a Christmas review. And for everyone he personally kills, he leaves a rose. Just like Kingpin and Daredevil. May we come up? You, you find, find your own tree. Okay, V, I like you so far, but you gotta stop talking during the Count of Monte Cristo. So we learn in this film that Evie's connection is that her parents were actually part of the political scene. After the death of her brother, they decided to be more vocal against the government. Why well, I wanted to ask if there's anything I can do to help make it right. And giving us an idea what Disney's live-action Hunchback of Notre Dame looks like. Oh my. Your Grace. Evie is actually infiltrating one of these enemies' headquarters in his own room to enact another plan. Someone's coming and I think he means to kill you. Oh jeez, and you had to go and rat V out because he thought you were on the wrong side. Ah, <sighs> snitches. To the wrong people, really. Best procure her confession! <laughs> okay, well, uh, remind me to never go to confession ever again. Oh, please! Have mercy! Oh, not tonight, Bishop. Not tonight. And now, running away from the situation, Evie meets up with Gordon. You trusted me. It would be terrible manners for me not to trust you. 
Okay, he's gonna tell her that he's Batman. It's a little bit of a weird casting, but all right. Uh, yeah, you know, he has a whole room full of different things like the Quran and embarrassing pictures of the Chancellor. And of course he has half-naked guys. I, we're, we're just gonna assume that it's his subscription to men's health. Unfortunately, a man in my position is expected to entertain young and attractive ladies like yourself. Let's just say in this reality, he'd rather have less Amadala and more Anakin to pay him some visits, but he has to keep it in the closet. You could tell this movie was made in 2006. You're going to kill me now. I killed you 10 minutes ago while you slept. Oh, uh, he's giving her a rose, but it's not gonna be a vicious death because, well, she had good intentions. This is probably the best season of The Bachelor ever. May 27th. Hey, that's my birthday. You assured me there wouldn't be a problem. Hey, I said it was my birthday, not theirs. Whoever he was, he is now the key to our dream and the hope that all of this would not have been in vain. Oh, his name is V because he was prisoner number Roman numeral five. November the 5th, looking at me because I felt it. Please put on some pants. Ah, uh, yeah, now they're starting to piece together that the government may not be as perfect as it pretends to be because they were responsible for massive murders. Just like our government was responsible for Hands Across America. We are the terrorists. We threw out the censor-approved script and shot a new one that I wrote this morning. Oh my god. Aw, oh, I hate it when commentary shows get political. By the way, I hope you voted. This has been neutralized. It's been a while, they're a little rusty, so they're pretty much resorting to Groucho Marx comedy mixed with a little bit of Benny Hill. Fire! Okay, it's not exactly a funny sketch, but I'll watch this a hundred times over than I would James Corden. Okay, guys, the sketch wasn't that funny. Should have just went on YouTube and bitched about it. Ready? It's not long after Evie gets captured. And while in prison, Evie finds a letter from another woman who had previously been captured as she writes about her past. And our place always smelt of roses. Those are the best years of my life. It is kind of funny that in movies, they always have lesbians look good, great lighting, this nice spread of food. You know, just enjoying each other's time. Now, let it be like two guys on a screen, and it's just them plopped on a couch playing video games. They took Ruth while she was out buying food. It ended in such a terrible place. But for three years, I love you. With all my heart, I love you. Okay, I can make a joke about like, hey, settle down, all right, we have have yet to meet, but... It's a touching scene. Patient, just give them something. But I'd rather die. They're completely free. Ah, see, it was a test all along. A test from V. Hello, Evie. I think the real test is he was trying to make her look like Sigourney Weaver in the Alien movies. Sick! You're evil! It's always adorable when Natalie Portman tries to pull off a British accent. But you know what, in all fairness, I can't even do a British accent myself unless, well, I guess if you count old medieval chambermaid as a British accent. Oh bloody hell, governor! Then yeah, I can pull off a British accent. All right, come on, you gotta pose now for the trailer shot. <laughs> What you want, what you really need, is a story. Ah, now we have a scene where V is interacting with Mr. Finch. Because Mr. Finch is kind of the good guy of the organization. So I guess he's kind of like the audience avatar as well, because just like Evie, 
he's also learning about V. Kind of like how I explained in the Batman review where Vicky Vale and Alexander Knox were the avatars for us to understand the main character. It's kind of like that with V for Vendetta. And now V is disguised as... I think he's supposed to be disguised as Alan Moore. He's a deeply religious man and a member of the Conservative Party. He's completely single-minded and has no regard for the political process. All right, so... I'm trying real hard not to really sound political here because I'm reviewing a movie. Basically, the story is that the government actually used fear tactics to tear the country apart, to have people from different sides start rioting and going after each other's throats, where it's left down to the anarchists and the fascists, and each side thinking the other side is the bad guy, all while the government is just watching the world pretty much implode on itself. Out. So far we count eight boxcars, several hundred thousand at least. And now people are starting to attach themselves to the idea of V and his views against the government. Or pretty much, I guess, being the little person who is finally stepping up and speaking for themselves. Kind of like in Disney's, Pixar's Bugs Life, where you have Hopper describing what happens when one person speaks up and it just grows into a big thing. Those puny little ants outnumber us a hundred to one. And if they ever figure that out, there goes our way of life. Yes, I had to use another movie to compare it to. And of course, V is spoon feeding the crowd by delivering costumes to them. Really, I want to know how rich this guy is. Anarchy in the UK! <laughs> okay, keep in mind sometimes when it comes to any kind of course of a violence, there's always the occasional asshole that'll try to go towards like the smaller businesses and of course that one person will represent everyone oh, it's chaos someone will do something stupid and because of that it costs the life of a little girl i can't follow up with a joke so Hey, here's a montage of him setting up some dominoes. Sutler will be forced to do the only thing he knows how to do. And then... Don't know why. No one else but himself is going to see it, but dominoes. <laughs> I would like to know how many times... He tried setting this up. Like, how long did it take him to set all that up? All right, V. You're almost there. Ah, oh, son of a bitch. Aw, oh, and just in time, Evie meets back up with V so she can help blow things up. But the choice to pull this lever is not mine to make. That's right, Evie. He's gonna take the train and reenact the ending of Batman Begins. Or reenact Spider-Man 2. Or reenact Triple X State of the Union. Any of those will work. Aw, she gave him a kiss. And look at him. He's blushing. I've kept my side of the bargain, but have you kept yours? Bring him down. Uh, you see what's going on here, right? Okay, so the Chancellor is really just more of the figurehead in the public eye. But the real mastermind is Creedy, because while the Chancellor is all bark and no bite, Mr. Creedy is the one who is the vicious villain here. And because it's a Wachowski film, if you're waiting on some Matrix-like moves, this is going to be your chance right here. Yeah, the death is sort of anticlimactic, but you got to understand, these people who love the theatrics of making themselves look big and powerful, for them both the Chancellor and Mr. Creedy to die underwhelmingly, it's kind of fitting because... You know, they just die like any other person. Nothing 
different about them. And from the final fight, V dies, Evie pulls the lever to release the train to blow up the parliament, and everyone dressed up as a bunch of anonymouses watch the explosion. Some of them take their masks off, and you see some of the people who have died in the film kind of as a callback to them finally getting their vindication. The movie did well, but it wasn't really that huge of a success. It was pretty much a fly-by-night kind of film, but just enough for things to be referenced every single November 5th. And of course, you know, every November 5th, you got people on Facebook quoting the Remember, Remember the 5th of November poem. Of course, the mess are now famous for the Anonymous. <laughs> you know, the computer hackers that like to make threats about hacking into the computer. They never really do anything. And Anonymous, if you're watching, I hope you don't... Uh, get mad at me and try to take it out on me, but I'm just saying, if you're really good at hacking computers, why don't you do something really impressive like, oh, I don't know, destroy my student debt. All our student debts. Be really effective. So after this movie was released, Alan Moore did not like it. Big shock. Alan Moore doesn't like anything that's released. Because of films like From Hell and League of Extraordinary Gentlemen, afterwards he just decided to not allow his name to be attached to any film projects. And the reason why Alan Moore didn't like this film is because, well, in his mind, when he first created V for Vendetta, it was actually more of what he considered a parody of the idea of how far anarchy can go and how far fascism can go, how both sides can really just take it a bit too far. For him, it was relevant to write about a story that took place in the UK. You gotta figure at this time it was part of the uh, Margaret Thatcher era and kind of like The Wall. It was more of a response towards anyone who had to grow up around the post-World War II era where you know the country was pretty much rebuilding and it was a bit of a tight grip on everyone. That's my loose interpretation. I am not really that great of a historian so Alan Moore kind of looks at the story as there is no good and everyone is flawed. He never meant for V to be treated as the hero. V is actually part of the extreme side of the anarchy. And of course the Chancellor and Creedy, they're the extreme side of fascism. When the Wachowskis released the film, it was done in 2006. This was during the Bush era. So it was actually more of a parallel to that time. This film was a reaction towards the Bush era, more like a critique. And Alan Moore did not like that. If I may just kind of read you a quote, what he said about the film. The movie has been turned into a Bush era parable by people too timid to set a political satire in their own country. It's a thwarted and frustrated and largely impotent American liberal fantasy of someone with American liberal values standing up against a state run by neoconservatives, which is not what the comic V for Vendetta was about. It was about fascism. It was about anarchy. It was about England. Well, if I may actually speak to that, all due respect, though, I'm going to have to disagree with Mr. Moore here, because... Art is actually subjective. Whatever you think it is, it is. Yes, Mr. Moore may have actually written the story as what he thinks it is, but a story like this is actually easily transferable to that time era and even to today's time. Let's go back to the film for a little bit where in the scene after Evie is released from the fake prison, V makes a point about how artists use lies to tell the truth. And isn't that what your story is, I mean, a story is built to be a parable to parallel what's going on in people's lives. Every generation deals with this kind of back and forth. So that's why storytelling like this is actually transferable through different generations. Yeah, I know back in your time you were trying to tell a story that you understand, but it really works for different eras. It works for the Bush era and it works for now. And, you know, you just got to kind of take that and let your work 
go out to the world and be enjoyed for different reasons. I mean, after all, your illustrator, David Lloyd, actually loved the movie, so. And of course, all people, I could understand the Wachowskis really latching on to this story idea, especially in response to the Bush era, because, well, at the time, they were the Wachowski brothers, and in recent years, they have gotten the surgery, and they both became the Wachowski sisters. So, yes, they really do put a lot of themselves into the film. So that is my take on V for Vendetta. I really don't want to be the guy that tries to sound political in his YouTube videos because I just really want to tell a story and tell some reviews and maybe occasionally land a joke or two. Rarely that happens, but I try. As we make it through this election, and God willing, maybe a new president scene, I wish you all the best. If you've been watching, thank you. If you're new, please like and subscribe. Ring the bell, you know the routine. And have a great Guy Fox Day.